My name is Thelma Russell, and I'm the chairperson of East Calvary Daycare Center. And I have been with the daycare center for 25 plus years. East Calvary has just completed, after several years, of renovation projects with a grant that we received for $200,000 from Senator Bryant Benjamin and Councilman Bill Perkins. I want to thank them and all our sponsors for being so generous to us. The children, staff, parents, board members want to invite you to come see the beautiful upgrades we were able to achieve. However, due to the pandemic, we were unable to do so at the present time, but we look forward to seeing you as soon as possible. We are, we are excited to share this video with you in the meantime, until you can come visit us in person. Thank you again, Senator Bryant Benjamin and Councilman Bill Perkins and all our sponsors. Your funding has allowed East Calvary Daycare Center to positively impact the families in Central Harlem community. And it makes a difference in the lives of our children whose hands are our future. Should the opportunity present itself to you, please keep us in mind for any future grants that become available. We are in need of funds to upgrade our children's outdoor playground, which has been deemed age inappropriate by the Department of Education. So your sponsorship will definitely help us again in the future. Any outdoor upgrade will allow East Calvary Daycare Center to become the beacon of the daycare center in the community. Again, please come and see us as soon as you can. We would love to have you. Thank you very much to all our sponsors. My name is George Pena Herrera. I am the director at East Calvary Daycare Center. I have been a director here uh, for 13 years. As far as the renovation, I mean, I, I worked in daycare centers that have been uh, in housing projects. And here at King Towers, uh, this daycare center has been in existence um, since the 19, late 1940s. And I believe the conditions of the center have, a, a lot of it has been since then. So it's, uh, it was very aged uh, and much need of, of repair. My name is Sean Rickenbacker. I'm the director of the J. Max Bond Center for Urban Futures at the City College of New York, which is located in the Spitzer School of Architecture. One of the kind of primary uh, concerns and objectives for the center is to provide uh, services and resources in terms of leadership, uh, ideas, uh, and implementation of those ideas uh, for the community. We were asked by the board here, led by uh, Ms. Thelma Russell, uh, if we could come survey the center and um, perhaps give them some ideas about what they might be able to do, uh, what the cost would be, um, and we, we certainly saw this as an important opportunity. Uh, the leadership at the college uh, and at the school were completely supportive and that's how we got involved. My name is Asefno Torres and I'm an architectural designer and the project lead on the East Calvary Daycare. When we first came to the site, there was a lot of work to be done. First of all, it was very dark, uh, something that you you didn't feel comfortable and felt very uninviting. A lot of it was run down. There was exposed ducts and um, like floors peeling and a lot of small things were, were off. And it kind of led us to focus on these points as a point of reference of where we could work in and where we can improve in. Well, you know, a daycare is a very unique uh, project in and of itself or, or program in and of itself. Um, so we as, uh, as adults, we, we understand spaces from our perspective, but, but a daycare is really about the children uh, and the people who serve them. So one of the key elements here was to think of the daycare as uh, these young children's first uh, experience with learning. Um, and care, right, the people who care for them. So um, the lighting fixtures were arranged in shapes that uh, the students can kind of recognize. Um, so star shapes 
angles, triangles, circles, uh, hexagons, um, and the flooring material, uh, which is actually a, a unique printed floor material. Um, we thought of the experience that many uh, children in Harlem have, um, which extends through generations, that a lot of times children don't get an opportunity to see the rest of the world. Um, or uh, experience it or understand it. So we have five distinct regions of the world uh, on this printed floor, um, something that they can walk in and see and experience and maybe develop some curiosity. Um, and from a teaching's perspective, um, we speculated, we, we don't have any proof of this, that um, these particular regions might also inform them about things uh, well beyond their age, uh, but you know, the early understanding of climate um, and different territories around the world uh, acting as different ecosystems. Uh, and that special kind of relationship to the space starts when they come into the building um, because where they are is uh, located on the map in Harlem. The floor colors uh, was really about uh, stimulating um, engagement, right? So, you know, the kind of brightness of each room being a distinct color, orange, blue, uh, and green. Uh, and again, the organization of the, of the fixtures being unique in each room. Uh, and then lastly, you know, some of the uh, attempts just to kind of control the um, kind of visual sight of what the students see uh, the space had not been renovated in 75 years, um, and so there were a lot of additional things like duct work that uh, for a child is probably unsightly even, and also for an adult. So we, we were able to um, design some coverings for these items, uh, and we use sustainable materials there that don't off-gas. Uh, and um, you know, we showed everything to the, the clients, the teachers, for their approval. Um, to get them involved in the design process, um, and, and that was that was fun. It gave them uh, some voice in the process, which we thought was important. So, at the end product, uh, once you you know you kind of reflected on the act, what the changes that took place at East Calvary, uh, my reaction was truly, truly a wow. It was a wow reaction uh, of from what it was to what it is now. Uh, just a uh, huge difference uh, in the areas that I mentioned before, in the area of lighting, in the area of the floors, in the area of the paint. Uh, it's, uh, the center came to life, you know, that was my reaction. It just was really, really a, a wow reaction. The largest impact I believe that the renovations had was in our classrooms. The new lighting and the very colorful flooring has actually just expanded our classrooms and made them so much more inviting um, to the parents and the children. And also the bathrooms. We currently have um, touchless bathrooms where the children no longer have to touch the sinks to wash their hands or to flush the toilet. Everything is sensors now. Um, and that definitely cuts down on transmissions of all types of things, especially during now, um, the new COVID era. As a result of working on this project, I, I feel like where I saw myself before as a designer working on, on any project, uh, it changed. Because I saw what real impact could be done by working in a space that, that really gives back to the community. And going forward, I really want to make it a mission of myself and, and wherever I work to really give back. Um, because this daycare, as small as it is and maybe where, where it is, it might not hold as much meaning, but to all of us who worked on this, the whole team, um, to our director and to the school, it, it means a lot. This is really uh, a coming home project for me in many ways because um, my family is from Harlem. Uh, I was born and raised here in New York City. Um, I have now been the director at the Bond Center for, for two years and this is our first uh, project under my leadership uh, that uh, 
was able to give the students an experience of uh, engaging and contributing uh, to the community uh, through their knowledge that they've acquired, uh, acting as both role models but also professionals uh, that are part of this community. So uh, this was really exciting for me um, because one, uh, I have friends who've grown up in the King Houses uh, that I've gone to college with. And so there's a long history of my familiarity with this area uh, and, and getting to know the daycare and connecting to the history uh, through Miss Russell's research uh, made it an even more profound experience. And so we're just really pleased that we're able to uh, provide the services we were uh, and that everyone seems to be quite happy with it. I enjoy I have enjoyed coming to East Calvary. Of course, the draw has always been uh, just watching, you know, the children, right? How they enter our program and how they leave and how they grow and what they learn. At the same time, I've had the, uh, I guess, the good grace uh, of the Lord giving me a staff that uh, we've had great rapport with. I, it's been always a good, close-knit uh, staff that uh, I have also seen grow. And they grow in their profession. I have seen them uh, continue with, with their education and they're getting uh, other their next degree or they've stepped up to the next level in their profession. So yeah, all of that, you know, kind of ties together for me as to why I come back. I mean, of course, in the end, it's, it's the love of the children. It's the love of the work that we do because I believe that we definitely make change. And, and it's such crucial ages between two years old and almost five when they leave us. To me, those are like the wonderful years that uh, we, we nurture and we kind of give the children the foundation of what they need going forward. I encourage the people in my community to bring their kids here. I do, I really have like, I work there, I love it there. The teachers are fine, they're great teachers. You can ask for better teachers. They're just the best. And, you know, bring your kids. I, I have so many neighbors who have also brought their kids here, so that makes me feel even better that you trust me to bring your kids here. Every day is just perfect here. Well, to me, like, I wouldn't want to work anywhere else but right here. During the Second World War, the country was enduring a child care crisis. Fathers were serving overseas, and mothers were working outside the home in unprecedented numbers. Children's child care programs were unavailable in most neighborhoods. In 1940, Reverend Dr. William James was ordained elder in the New York Conference of the United Methodist Church and was appointed to East Calvary Church in Harlem. Reverend James was a member of the United Methodist City Society, a mission agency of the Methodist Church, and he eventually founded the Wood Memorial Day Nursery in the early 1940s. The nursery was opened to fill the need for child care and became a place where pre-public school age children could attend while the mothers went to work. The Wood Memorial Day Nursery was formally incorporated in 1946 and began its history as a pillar of child care in the Central Harlem community. Wood Memorial Day Nursery changed its name to East Calvary Nursery in 1955. Another important role for East Calvary was its ability to bring parents from the community together to form an organized group to aid in stabilizing the community and becoming advocates for the children and older youth. Some of East Calvary's early teachers attended the Bank Street School. East Calvary has helped to educate some of Harlem's prominent families, such as the Presleys. Alex Presley is a New York developer, and his brother Calvin became a renowned pastor. Helen Davenport, who became Dr. Helen Mendes Love, 
attended Columbia University and became the president of Mendes Consultation Services of Los Angeles. She authored the African Heritage Cookbook, which is now a classic cookbook. Her brother Arthur became a pastor. Many others that were educated at East Calvary have gone on to become greatly successful. Another outstanding East Calvary alumni is Pamela Green Perkins, wife of former New York State Senator Bill Perkins, who became the administrative manager for the Board of Elections in New York City. Miss Shirley Chisholm, a staunch advocate for early childhood education, was employed at East Calvary and later became an advisor. She went on to become the first African-American woman in Congress in 1968, and the first woman in African-American to seek nomination for President of the United States from one of the two major political parties in 1972. Wood Memorial Day Nursery, later East Calvary Nursery, was started during World War II and 74 years later continues to be a beacon for early childhood education in Harlem today. We thank you for helping us to continue our legacy. I hope you will enjoy this small token of gratitude from East Calvary Daycare Center. <laughs>